Hey everyone, it's Joe and Isaiah here from The Automator. And Isaiah's had this really interesting, it's a great idea. I don't know why, I actually, I know why I've never talked about it because I didn't really understand it. So mm -hmm. he's going to show us here what he was talking about with, um, what was it, Semant uh, semantic, semantic versioning. versioning. Yes, yeah. it is It is something that most uh, developers even do without knowing or right. they have a, an idea of it or they really are passionate about. Those are the three options. They do it by mistake, they know a little bit or they're really passionate about it. So uh, the reason why this topic came up is because I had a very weird issue that I think is solved by semantic version. That's the reason why people adopted this, right? So here's the issue. The problem was that I use a tool for making videos and I do not have a graphics card at the moment. And I had my tool working. I had to reinstall Windows. So I re-downloaded my tool. And now my graphics card is not recognized. It says that there's an error. And I was like, oh, hold on, what happened? searching and searching and searching. I actually spent almost four hours trying to search for a solution for this. I found out that there's a version, a specific version of the program that stops uh, support for my card. Okay. So that is, that was the issue. Now to find out which version it was, it was a nightmare. <laughs> so let me show you more or less what we, dis what we talk about uh, semantic versioning. There is a website like that is called semver.org that has a very good summary on it. So the summary is that you always use three digits separated by dots, and each of them has a meaning. That's the point about semantics in that sense, that you're adding a meaning to each number. And the, the, the idea is that the first number is the major change, a major change. The second number is a minor change. And the third one is just a patch. So whenever you're creating your program, if you are fixing an issue that doesn't break compatibility with other previous versions, then you would use the patch. If you're adding features that do not break compatibility, you use the minor patch. But if you actually make a change on your program that goes ahead and breaks compatibility with the previous stuff, then you should change the major number in here. So what happened was, here's the, the, the problem. So the program that I was using, I, I, and I told you, Joe, like, I'm sure that I used version 17 and that was working. So when I went ahead and download version 17 again, it didn't work. So I was like, why not? Well, it so just happens that version 17.4.9, specifically that one, made a change that break compatibility with my card. So I had to figure out which version of the software was actually working. So I downloaded first the 17, right? The 17.0, right? That worked. Then I went ahead of a few numbers. I said like, okay, let me get 17.4. That actually worked. 17.4.2, that worked. And then when I was at 17.6, it was still working. And then at 17.9, then it broke. And I was like, oh my God. And, and, and it was a, a very big <laughs> program. It was like two gigabytes all the time. So it was really annoying to try to find out which version actually broke compatibility. Well, and, and that's where we as developers have to take a step back and say, it's where you think it will break compatibility, right? Like sometimes you do stuff and you don't think it's going to have the effects it does for every computer out there, right? Right, right. But, but, but here's, yeah, so, so here's the part where you have tests for your software, especially big programs like this, they have a test suite. And every time they do something, they test. If it shows up as something that is not working um, and they consider that a backward uh, breaking compatibility, then they would just go ahead and jump to the next number. So for me, I downloaded 18. It didn't work. I said like, okay, I know that it might be a big change. That doesn't work. Let me try 17. That I would have expected it to work because it was working for me previous to that. So I was not expecting that a very specific version was the one that had the issue. And it created such a huge nightmare uh, to find out which version actually worked. 
Yeah, and and you mentioned also with Auto Hotkey. If I don't know if you want to show it, you know, yes. There's the version so two and yeah, one. But we have more digits, right? right. So a ASK version. Um, you've got 1.1.33.11. So if this was semantic versioning, you wouldn't have the last section. And that in AutoHotKey has its own meaning. I'm not really sure what the meaning would be. But uh, this would mean it is the first version. It had one uh, feature added and 33 patches. That's the reason why I know that this is not semantic versioning because it's not true that he just has added one feature. There's a lot of features <laughs> added, sure. right? Uh, I think the first number here is irrelevant. Like the one in here is irrelevant. I think version one, 33 features and 11 patches. Maybe that might make a little bit more now, sense. Do me a favor, um, switch it because I know you can do this in your tool. Switch right. to version two. And, and does right. it have the same number of decimals? No, um, actually, this one is 2.0, which is, it, it goes with semantic versioning. And then beta 0.3, it goes also with semantic, semantic versioning because they allow you to do that. So it looks like he's switching to semantic versioning, but I'm not really well, sure yet. Well, and it, and it gets back to it. It's easy to forget that, you know, A, Lexicos wasn't always the person in charge of auto hockey. I know. No, that's right. Right. But exactly. Who, who knows? You know, and maybe it was just like, you know what, we've had it this way for so long, you know, they're keeping Let's just it. keep, the, yeah, right. But in this case, the reason why he started with 2.0 is because the right. new version of AutoHotKey breaks backwards compatibility. So he's actually following the idea of, okay, let's change the major number because we're breaking backwards compatibility. And I'm not really sure if now he's going to continue with semantic versioning specifically, or if he's just going to use a specific in-house in well, which is not, this is not like you have to do it this way. Yeah. But I would say it is a very common way most of the libraries and APIs use semantic versioning. And there's a reason for it is because it actually helps <laughs> other developers oh, know where yeah. we're standing. Once you understand they have meaning. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, yeah. the, the de um, columns or decimal places have a Are, meaning. Right. Yeah, it's very mm -hmm. interesting. Um, so I could just make my program say, do not download anything that breaks backward compatibility just by checking on the first number. If the first number changes, then don't download anything. Download anything that is below that. So it, it makes everything easier, you know? Yeah. So yeah, that was that was something that I had a little bit of a, <laughs> of a run in. And then well, I figured out, you know, semantic versioning would have saved me a lot of trouble. Right. Uh, and it actually... Back to your point, though, Isaiah, if if we're if those of us who are mere mortals and aren't programmers, um, yeah. if we have a program that's not working, you just helped explain the approach you might take in figuring out which one does work. Right? Yeah, yeah. Start off so with the main, if that works, hey, go to the next digit. Exactly. And actually, in our tools, since we started working, every single time I add uh, my version numbers, it is actually semantic versioning. So for now, all our tools are at version zero because we haven't actually published them for real. Right. No, no. So basically, I'm, I'm just basic. <laughs> I haven't worked at all, right? <laughs> no, but basically, um, they yeah. are in beta, kind of like beta stuff. Like they're just mainly we're testing. And after we are really happy with the results and people are using it in a good way, I would start with 1.0. But yeah. right now, you can tell that just for this tool, the Auto Hotkey String Lookup, I have added 34 uh, features and I have done two patches at least to fix this in this particular version. So after I finished, after I reached the 34th version, I have fixed two things on that version. Because what happens is that if I go to 35, this number here gets reset to zero. Right, right. so it gets received. And now if I make changes to 35, I make fixes to it, then I start you know, going up on this number. That's what it does. And after you get the idea, it makes so clear like, oh, Right, that makes sense, you know. <laughs> so, so yeah, I do. Well, think... I had one other question for you. Did you yes. have you ever tried to search to see? Because you mentioned semantic versioning, right? Yes. Are there other naming conventions out there that have four digits that maybe would shine light on, or or are they just like you said? I think you alluded to. There's, you know, there's other ways people use this, but is there just a whole different right. approach? Now, here's the deal versioning and i think i remember <laughs> uh 
if uh, ex, uh, Stack Overflow, I, I remember like 10 years ago when I started with, uh, with uh, coding in Auto Hotkey, I remember asking about what was the best approach for uh, using version numbers, right? And they told me that is up to the uh, to the, the coder to develop to the right? coder. It is totally you add the wow. meaning that you want. And yeah. he was saying, like, hold on, there are programs. Like, for example, if you take a look at Chrome, for example, they are at version one hundred, right? Right. So this number is not really that they broke compatibility 100 times. Very likely right. it's not that, that's not really the, the meaning of it. Right. Um, because version 89 and version 90, they right. work basically the same. So it's not really that it seems to be. Yeah. But there are some other tools that never go out of number one. They are always at version one. Even right. though they break stuff, it is always one point you know, 100. So again, it depends. Oh, right. I found it. So <laughs> let me show you. I had this, this here code version change rules. And that was my question. It was 11 years ago. So again, this is for a long, long time. And I was saying like how to upgrade versions correctly. And I was saying like, okay, I'm going to start with a small thing. Blah, blah, blah. And the question was like, you know what? Version numbering policy can be crazy at times. And then he just told you, you know, they, they gave me <laughs> also see software version is, is ridiculous. That was a very nice article. That's hilarious. Yeah, yeah. That, that was that was a yeah. very interesting uh, thing. And again, the reason why and, and, and at that time, they were already starting with, you know, semantic versioning at some point. It was. And then he said, like, note that correctly, it is semantic versioning can cool. also be guided by some pragmatic factors. And he says like Git actually made some changes to their semantic versioning. Just they are the ones that do that. And it is not that you have to follow that. It's just that for them, it makes sense. So instead of 1.9.0 RC, oh, sorry, instead of nine RC, it's going to be 1.9.0 RC. For them, that makes sense. For some other people, it doesn't. So again, the main idea that I'm trying to drive through is just, uh, you know, it is up to you. It, you decide what to do, but it seems like semantic versioning came about. It's a very intuitive uh, approach. And, right? and, and it came about of how ridiculous it is. <laughs> like everybody, everybody comes up with a very strange way of numbering systems, right? Yeah. Well, it's, it's so, like yeah. the... Uh, Let's make it version five, right? And it's hey, it's you know you can better. you can you can definitely just start with your program. First time you launch it is version five point ten. You know right. it, it doesn't matter. Yeah. So it is not uh, rules set in stone. This is just a guidance. But I think, in in my opinion, semantic versioning is so widely adopted because it makes sense. And after you understand the sense of it, like then you will look at other numbers and be like, come on, what are you doing? <laughs> like what just happened to me? Like I spent almost four hours reaching in the forums because I had such a specific card that not everybody was talking about it. So when so, I finally got it, then I had to find the specific version that broke well, my problem. Yeah, you know, and like, that's my point on. of like, they may not have realized, you know, someone made a change somewhere and didn't realize it was gonna, you know, for some tiny fraction, because that's the other problem is, if it's going to affect one one thousandth of a percent of people, is yeah, it really going to yeah. count as not backwards compatible? Right, right, you know? right. I, I do agree with your point now. Like, yeah, it, it because it is a very wildly used software. It is not like one or two people. This is millions of people using it right. in professional industries and you know uh, amateurs like me. Right. So I get your point, even though they might not have even noticed, but it actually means that for me it yeah. actually became a big issue just because the number that changed it was such a tiny specific one yeah. which is why my point of you just gave a decoder ring to help people figure out which one you know how do i figure out what one will work that's yes. honestly that's even the, i know as a programmer the information you're giving me is great but just as a user this is awesome as well right yes yes right. yes 
There you go. And, awesome. and I think, I hope that some people might find this useful in general for their programs or for their consumption in the end. Yeah. Yeah. And if you guys have something you're doing differently, comment here yeah. and tell us what you're doing and why, why you like it better. Right. Yeah. I'd love to hear it. Awesome. awesome. Cheers.